Hi, this is Rich Graham from HeadSight. Thanks for joining us today. We're going to be showing the installation of a four sensor standard HeadSight wheat system on a 600D Draper header. It's on an S series John Deere combine. And before we start, as is true anytime we're working on a header, we're going to discuss the five safety precautions. Perform all combine and header manufacturer safety precautions for servicing header. Insert stop to prevent movement of the header. Turn off combine and remove the key from the ignition. Set combine parking brake. And finally, disconnect all drive shafts from the header. The tools you're going to need for today's installation are a cordless drill, drill bit set, socket set, wrenches, snap ring pliers, side cutter, pliers, and a hole saw kit. We also use an impact wrench to speed installation. The actual components and parts that you're going to have would be the wiring harnesses, the conduits that strengthen the wiring harnesses, the actual paddles, which you're going to have a double set for the number of sensors you order, the sensors themselves, the brackets that hold them and they're attaching hardware, the insight box, the harness for the insight and brackets, your particular system may vary and will include the parts needed for your combine and header. Our first step in installation is mounting the sensors. We start with the outside sensor and the principle here is we want it as far to the outside as possible. This particular head has poly. It has clips that prevent us from going any further out so the clip is then our limiting factor. We are also looking at the depth and that's how far forward we can go. We would then scribe that and then use the bracket as a template. We then come forward noting our scribe mark, noting our, our outside limitation and we then mark our four holes. These holes then we would drill out with a quarter inch drill bit. Those are our pilot because this head has poly. If your head doesn't have poly, you can skip this step. We use a three quarter inch hole saw which removes the poly for the flush mount of the bolt that's going to be attaching the bracket. After we've got that hole drilled, we drill it back to oversize of the 5 16 bolts that we're using using a 3 8 drill bit. Now we're going to install the sensor to the mounting bracket. We have a bracket mounting hardware kit that we've got laid out. And of course the bracket is upside down so we can install it here. And we have to remove the cover and the bolt that is attaching the wiring harness. Now as we lay that in there we notice that these three bolts will line up. We've got a nut going on the inside here. All of these bolts are going to be finger tight during this step because the wiring, the final installation of that later is going to do the final torquing of the bolts. Now as we get to this, what's going to be the uh, top bolt, which is our bottom bolt now, is the longer bolt that we grab from our kit because of a cable clamp that's going to be used in the next step, in the wiring step. And with all of these sensors, the wire is going to exit the rear of the sensor. And of course, we don't want to pinch wiring whenever we're in this area and later when we go through the cap as well. This is a critical area not to let wires get pinched. Now we're ready to install that to the cutter bar. We have our four bolts and nuts. And we're going to start, uh, of course, uh, with the bolts always facing from the bottom up because this is the abrasive side. I'm going to have the nut at the top. I'm 
Now that we've got the four bolts on, we're going to grab the impact, square the bracket, and then tighten the four bolts. In your kit, you'll notice you have two different length paddles, longer and shorter. The shorter is used in the center. We won't use that now. And the longer is always used on the outsides. Let's install that now with the two bolts. Get them started and tighten. Now that we've installed the outer sensors, let's discuss the spacing of the center. This head is a 40 foot head and since we have three gaps we divide by three which gives us approximately 13 feet between sensors to get it equally spaced over the entire width of the header. Also when you take into that mounting sit situation remember to consider mounting obstructions and the wiring distances between the wiring runs. Notice here on the center sensors that you also have the shorter paddles. Here we have a mounted tethered cable and we notice that we grab a bolt in the back that attaches to the frame and of course we're going to install it into the rear of the paddle and we use a screwdriver to open that slot install in there. The final tensioning is accomplished by just pulling some tension away because of the spring load and tighten it so that there's just tension on that tethered cable. The reason we have a tethered cable is for backing up and it provides safety to the sensing arm. But remember, when backing up, always remember to raise the header. And now we're doing the wiring at the sensor. We need to install a, sh a protective sheath. In order to do that, we find a box end wrench that's just larger than the diameter of the wiring and that will open up the conduit. And then we wrap that with electrical tape, as you can see there that will allow us to quickly install that through that conduit. Let me show you how. We're installing the box end wrench into the conduit, followed by the wire. Your thumb holding the wire in place. And that installs the conduit. After we've attached the top bracket that secures the internal wiring, we tighten the bolt on the back holding the cable sheath. The critical thing here is we want this wire always taunt totally inside the outside of the sensor body. Then we're going to attach the cover and the critical thing is here, do not pinch any of the wiring. So have it tucked in nicely here as you install the bracket so that none of the tabs can catch the wiring. Install the bracket, cover, and you're done. We're now at the end of the head with the shields removed and we notice as we start routing the, the cable with the sheath away from the sensor it's extremely critical to keep it both above and forward of the war zone of stubble going on there by bringing it above the skid plate and up to the side of the head and attaching it here with a supplied cable clamp and then continue routing rearward keeping away from all turning shafts using the existing hoses to attach with zip ties coming through the rear and nicely bringing it to the rear again going through the shields and up toward the rear. We've also you see have already sent the tether through here. This can be very difficult and extremely worthwhile to do a clean uh, long-lasting installation. Now we're ready to pull that through the frame. Now we're on the inner sensor and again we're starting the wiring routing from the sensor itself. Be very mindful. This is important to remember the war zone is going right past here. So we always want to respect this wall and stay within the body of the sensor. We have it nicely clamped here, routed securely here, totally under the belt and forward. Again tucked in on top of the skid and clamped along the sides and well hid from the wheat stubble and coming back to the rear of the head. It then goes up the frame member and this side will go easily to the insight box. The other inner sensor on the other side will go up to the top main frame and like we did on the outer sensors will then easily route to the center. 
Okay, in the back of the head here, near the combine, we're installing the insight box with a bracket provided. It installs right here for the operator to, to look at. The harness then is attached here to the bottom of it. And the critical thing here, very important, is the sequence in which you install these sensors to this harness. We've all had the four sensors routed here already, so now we're attaching them. So the first one is the left outer sensor, and this is all in reference to the operator sitting in the seat driving the combine. The left outer is the first one or closest to the insight box. The second one would be the left center as you're going across the head. The center one is skipped because this is a five sensor harness and we're using four sensors. The next one or second to last is the right center and then the tail of that harness would be the right sensor. After that, we properly install that, hold that up, and make it a nice, neat installation, and continue the end of it coming over here where we splice into the original combine harness by simply removing the snap ring and the 31 pin connector, which is then this connector, and putting our piece of harness in there, attaching it with the bracket and a couple zip ties, putting the snap ring back on up here, and attaching the feather side harness if necessary. Here's an example of our feather sight T harness installation where we tee in at the feeder house lift cylinder pressure sensor, install the T, and then off that T we grab our harness which is going to follow the existing wiring and going up it'll grab this bulk line of hoses that are going toward the front. We zip tie them with our zip ties provided, carefully observing to keep away from turning shafts and pulleys all the way toward the front of the combine. Now as we continue the wiring toward the front of the combine, we see that it's following these hoses and continues up across this branch of hoses and wiring under this shield up to the front and we connect it all the way through and attach it with zip ties to the final connection here at the single point connector. It's important to note that when operating or calibrating the head sight system, the gauge wheel pin is in the unlock or field position and the float adapter pin is also to be removed from the transport position to the field position. And this is true for the other side as well. This completes the installation, wiring, and pre-calibration portion. The next step would be to calibrate the insight box, then calibrate the combine. If you have any questions, refer to your operator's manual or call tech support at HeadSight. Thanks for watching and have a safe harvest.